Choosing what to wear on camera is not easy. You want to feel confident, but still comfortable. You want to be taken seriously, but be authentic. If I had a dollar for every client that texted me a picture of the outfits that they might wear for an on-camera appearance, I'd be rich. So stay tuned to Moxie Talk, and we are going to break down what to wear and what not to wear on camera. Hey everyone, I'm Fia Fastbinder and welcome to Moxie Talk, where we help you find your voice, share your message, and lead with confidence. Today we are talking about when you go into your closet, what should you wear if you have an on-camera appearance? It's difficult, I get it, but there are some do's and don'ts that I think will help you choose the right outfit. Umbrella concept for any appearance you have is that you feel like a million bucks in that outfit. You have to have confidence in what you're wearing. And by confidence, I don't mean that you feel like you blend in or you feel safe or you feel comfy, although I do want you to be comfortable. I mean you feel confident. You feel like gangbusters. You feel like the best version of yourself. You feel like you look like a million bucks. That is the guiding light, the North Star for anything you wear for any kind of speaking opportunity. And I always say, if you don't have an outfit like this and you are speaking more and more, especially on camera, go and get one. And if you have a local Nordstrom's or a store that has somebody that can help you, let them, let them pick out outfits for you. Tell them that you are doing a lot of on-camera appearances or one really important one and get one outfit, just one that you know every time you put that on, you feel great. It can be your on-camera presentation outfit. So this is first and foremost, is that you feel great in it. Now let's talk about a couple do's and don'ts for specifically on camera. The first is color. Don'ts are white for sure. White throws off the white balance in the camera and sometimes makes your face look all yellowy and jaundice, which none of us want. Uh, black can be a problem if you have dark hair because sometimes if the cameras don't have enough definition, you can look like a floating head or you're on a black background. So white is a definite no-no and black is a maybe no-no depending on the situation. Another no-no is patterns. Patterns are really distracting on camera. Think about it. You are in this rectangle or square that is much larger than you would look if you were on a stage where you had a lot of room around you. And if you are taking up half of that frame and you're wearing flowers on top, that could be extremely distracting to your viewer. So I always recommend no patterns and the best choice of color, if you're thinking, okay, no whites, no patterns, no blacks, what should I wear, is jewel colors. Everybody looks great in jewel colors, whether it's green like this, or a magenta, or a blue, everybody looks great in jewel colors. So look for something that you feel great in, and that will make you look like a million bucks, make you feel confident, and if you can, jewel colors. Guys, you might be thinking, I am not wearing jewel colors. I would say if you're going to wear a suit, just avoid like a dark gray suit or a black suit that's going to swallow you whole on camera and wear a color like a navy or a light blue that will definitely make you pop and make your skin color look great. Last but not least with colors is to think about what will make you appear to have executive presence? This is especially true for women. There are study after studies that show if you wear a light pink or a light lavender, even if these are your favorite colors, 
people's impression of you won't be as powerful. That's why Power, Power Red came into existence. So for women especially, if you want to make sure proven, tried and true color that will convey executive presence and make you look confident, go for those jewel tones. Avoid lighter colors like light pink or lavender or light green, which might not have as much oomph as you're really looking for. We've talked about colors both for men and women. Another thing that drives me crazy with people's dress is frumpy or wrinkled clothes. You do not want to be tugging on your clothes during your TV appearance. Believe me, I have seen speakers that are at the top of their game who are wearing things that I swear they tried on for the first time when they went on stage and spend the whole time kind of tugging at it or pulling it up or trying to keep the buttons done. So make sure your clothes are not wrinkled and they fit you well. Whether they are too loose or too tight, make sure that the clothes fit you well and you're not gonna be pulling at them the entire time. I've said this in many other videos, I'm gonna say it again here. If you are not sure what your outfit looks like on video or on camera, record yourself and look at it. You will see the most unbiased opinion. I know it's hard to be unbiased about ourselves, but the most unbiased, the most objective opinion about what you're wearing than you can possibly get. You can also ask somebody that you trust it's really a good idea to make sure you try on the outfit, you see it for yourself in camera, and you ask somebody else to give you their opinion before you go on that important TV interview. And make sure that you've taken all the tags off and you've tried it on before you go on camera. You'll discover not only does it fit you well, do I have to tug on it, but also does it show my best self? Do I look confident? Do I feel confident? Can I move in it? If you are walking onto the interview, can I move in it? These are all really important things to discover before they start rolling the camera. Another tip I have along with making sure you try on that outfit that you feel so confident in before you start the camera is to think about where your mic is going to be clipped. This is more difficult for women and it's something you really need to think about because if you wear a dress with no pockets, you're gonna end up getting that mic hooked to the very top of your dress in the back or I'm not kidding you, sometimes around your leg like a garter belt. If you don't want that, it's important to think about an outfit that they can hook the mic onto or you can hook the mic into. Again, I say this is easier for men because most men wear button down shirts where it's easy to hook it uh, or pants with po pockets in the back where it's easy to hook it. For women, if you're going to wear a skirt or a dress, it's much more difficult. So just think about that ahead of time. Know that there, where there's a will, there's a way. You can figure out a place to put that battery pack and hook that lavalier mic on, but it might be more difficult if you don't wear something with buttons or pockets. Also, making sure that that mic isn't rubbing against material or your skin. If you are filming yourself, this is super important. If you film your video and you don't listen to it back until afterwards and it is rubbing against material, guess what folks? You get to film the entire thing over again. And who wants that? It's really important to think about making sure that mic is away from your clothing, away from your body so it doesn't pick up on the sound of your rubbing because it is so distracting and you will have to refilm. So try to dress in a way that not only sets you up for success as far as where they're going to hook your mic up, but makes you feel confident and makes you look like gangbusters on camera. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, I'm just going to wear my hoodie or I'm just going to wear my baseball cap or I'm just going to wear my t-shirt on camera. I, I know a lot of people like Tony Robbins or Gary V might do this, but if you're not a TV personality already and you're not some incredible thought leader and you're trying to build your brand, just like we said, jewel colors are a sure hit every time, I would go a step up from your audience. That's a sure hit. So if your audience wears t-shirts, maybe go a really nice t-shirt, something with a little bit of style or a button down that's still casual but isn't too overdressed, one step up from your audience. That will ensure that you're not underdressed, you're taken seriously, and when you become that celebrity personality who goes viral on YouTube, then you can go into your baseball hat and your hoodie. But start by making sure you dress in a way that shows you're taking this seriously. Now, I know a lot of people are going to debate with me on that, but that is my two cents for what it's worth. Last but not least, as far as what you're wearing is the accessories like your shoes or your jewelry. It's really important to think about your shoes if we can see your shoes. If we can't see your shoes, it's not important. Or if you are going to move and you're being filmed, make sure, just like I asked you to try those clothes on ahead of time, if you are moving in the shoes that you are presenting in, for instance, you're leading a conference or presenting at a conference and you're being filmed, Make sure you try those shoes on and you can walk in them before this appearance. I can't tell you how many clients I've coached that go out to the shoe store, they try on a pair of shoes, they don't walk around on them, they don't go up and down stairs in them, and then they get to the presentation and they're wobbly and they're unconfident and they are the opposite of grounded. Try on your outfit, Try on your shoes if they're going to be seen and if you're moving. Jewelry, same idea. Jewelry that is noisy or distracting is a no-no and make sure you try it on with your outfit. It blends in, it doesn't stand out too much and you can move without it making noise. I actually had a bracelet on with this watch that I took off just to make sure I didn't make noise when I made hand gestures. So try on your jewelry with your outfit. If you're not sure how it looks, you know what I'm gonna say, video yourself. So I've been on this distraction soapbox, if you haven't noticed, throughout this video about what to wear. Make sure your outfit doesn't distract you because you're pulling at it. Make sure your shoes don't distract you because you can't walk in them. Make sure your outfit isn't distracting. Make sure your jewelry isn't distracting. If you're gonna think just in general, make sure you look and feel confident and you are not distracting in any way. Your hair is no different. If your hair is in your face and you are playing with it or pushing it out of your face the whole time, you will distract your audience. Make sure your hair is out of your face either by putting it back or by getting somebody to do your hair. There is nothing wrong with investing if you have a really important video you're about to film, an important TV appearance, an important on-camera opportunity. There's nothing wrong with investing in somebody professional to do your hair and makeup, especially if that's not your strong suit. You will feel great you will look professional and you don't have to worry about your hair and makeup distracting your viewers. So consider this along with buying an outfit that makes you feel confident, investing in somebody to do your hair and makeup so that you know you feel like your best version of yourself. My last tip is something that you do not need a professional makeup person to do. And the key here is to know that shine is your enemy when you are filming. And a lot of us get shiny because we get nervous or we get hot under the lights and we start to get shiny, or we just have great oils in our skin that keep us from getting wrinkled, but 
appear shiny on camera. So if you can invest in a great matte powder and apply it before you film, you'll make sure that you don't distract your viewers with a spot over your forehead that is like a light bulb. Nobody wants this and it happens so often. Go to your local drugstore, get a matte powder. There are a ton of them on the market now. There's even a lot of makeup on the market now for on-camera work. So get one that you know works with your skin tone or is translucent and is matte, 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 and apply it right before you film. And on that note, if you are a woman, make sure that you wear lipstick that's a little bit on the darker side. Our lips tend to get washed out on video. And even if you are not a lipstick wearer, you're a more natural kind of woman that doesn't like to wear lipstick, for your videos, I highly recommend getting a lipstick that you feel good in and is on the darker side. I can't tell you how many times I've been coaching backstage and I know that one of my speakers is about to go out and they are going to be on camera and they have no lipstick on. I have started to carry lipsticks in my bag for this occasion. And I can tell you as much as some of these women fight me, I don't wear lipstick, I don't wanna wear lipstick. When they see the video, they're glad they did because you can see their mouth and that's important. So I hope all of these tips helped you with your on-camera appearance, gave you some ideas of how to look like a million bucks in your TV interview, and I hope that you become the rock star that you know you can be and you look it inside and out. If you like this video, make sure to share it, like it. If you want more videos about presentation skills, especially on-camera, presentation skills, subscribe to our channel. And if you want more information on Moxie Institute and our presentation skills training company, check out moxieinstitute.com. See you soon.